Okay, folks, today I want to talk a few minutes about topical pain agents. We have been talking about different pain medication. And topical pain medications, they are also useful to control pain. And they have several potential advantages of our systemic drugs. First of all, you can deliver them at the site of insult. And also, they have the low rates of systemic absorption. Like for example, as you know, most of these pain medications can give acid reflux problems. They can cause peptic ulcer in chronic use. But these topical agents, they don't have those side effects. So some people, they actually prefer topical agents because uh, of the less side effect profile. So the patients often perceive topical preparations to be safer than their oral equivalents. So significant systemic concentrations can result with topical application and systemic side effects are also possible. So don't think that uh, because these are topical, they don't have systemic side effects. They can still cause systemic side effects even though they are less. Let me give you a few topical agents today. Number one, topical lidocaine. Topical lidocaine. People use it. I, I saw one lady, she pulled out a lidocaine patch, a, a, a large patch on her back. And I asked her, is it helping you? She said, yes, it helps me a lot. So, uh, there is uh, this patchwork that, that helps. A 2014 systematic uh, review, it concluded that in the aggregate, while there is little evidence to support the use of topical lidocaine uh, to treat uh, neuropathic pain, results from individual studies and clinical experience, they suggest that it can be effective in some patients. The 5% lidocaine patch has shown efficacy and excellent tolerance in people, especially people with post-herpetic neuralgia and allodynia, and in patients with uh, allodynia with different types of peripheral neuropathic pain. Now, what is allodynia? Basically, allodynia is pain due to stimulants, which are normal many times. Basically, let us say, I went under the sun. Everybody is enjoying the sun. Oh, what a warm, nice day. But I am having pain because of the sun. So that is allodynia. So I have allodynia to the warm sun. And people can have different, different things. People can have allodynia to even cold and uh, a fan like air for example if you turn a fan and the air gushing forth and people say hey i am having uh, this pain that's allodynia we say i am enjoying this fan but some people say it's causing me pain so basically they are not crazy they are experiencing that pain so this pain, many times there could be peripheral neuropathy here and they benefit a lot from these topical agents. Lidocaine gel is available, 5%. It is less ex expensive than the patch and it also is efficacious in patients with post-herpetic neuralgia and allodynia. And topical lidocaine is most appropriate for patients with well-localized neuropathic pain. Although it can be used as a monotherapy, it is often used as an adjunct to systemic medication. Then the other one, the chili cream, right? People ask, give me some chili cream. Basically, this is capsaicin cream. It's an alkaloid derived from chili peppers. Repeated application is often thought to deplete substance P from primary afferent neurons. So basically this medication, it depletes substance P and it gives pain relief. 
basically the mechanism of action to be honest with you is not really clear but what is happening is this chili pain is actually dominating the real pain you are having and giving you a sense of relief a systematic review found that capsaicin had moderate to poor efficacy for relief of chronic musculoskeletal or neuropathic pain but might be useful as an adjunct therapy or for patients un unresponsive to other treatments capsaicin has been used in patients with post neuropathic neuralgia hiv neuropathy and diabetic neuropathy capsaicin cream must be applied 3 to 4 times per day over the entire painful area and uh, give it like uh, maybe i would say 6 7 weeks and you can also use a patch this patch is like a take that uh, skin and apply for 60 minutes but major adverse effects are burning and stinging and erythema at the site of application leading to intolerance in up to 30% of patients so capsaicin cream it helps in some patients then nzs some of the nzs we have like a lot of nzs in the oral form but there are also some nzs like diclofenac which are available in topical form so basically this topical form either a patch or a gel or spray or cream it gives modest relief for acute musculoskeletal musculoskeletal pain evidence of effectiveness for these agents for chronic low back pain or chronic musculoskeletal pain for chronic peripheral neuropathic pain is uh, not that strong so these are good in acute pain a systematic review of four randomized trials found that a topical 1.5% diclofenac was more effective than a control vehicle in the relief of knee osteoarthritic pain and it was well tolerated a systematic review found that response rates for topical salicylates for chronic pain are lower than topical diclofenac then there is topical doxepin so topical doxepin basically it is available in topical formulation for the treatment of pruritus that is itching but some people say it is also helping their pain you see we don't know i mean when they when it is giving sometimes even histamine can cause pain because histamine it is it releases that neurotransmitters and it can cause pain so when you are using this doxepin and when it is treating the pruritus patient might get pain relief so even the the mechanism of action here is not that clear based on patient's experience we can say it is effective in some patients so those are the main points i want to discuss with you today about topical pain management and you are welcome to come to my clinic if you need a prescription for topical lidocaine or topical diclofenac i am prescribing right now topical diclofenac for patients with pain uh, like osteoarthritis and i would be happy to evaluate you thank you so much